Thank you. Um, I hope everyone has seen my slides. Um, again, my name is Thomas Schmidt from the Media Informatics Group of the University of Regensburg, and I will report on a project uh, for a paper called Information Behavior Towards False Information and Fake News on Facebook, the Influence of Gender, User Type and Trust in Social Media. The origins of this project are situated in a seminar course I visited um, in Information Science by David Elsweiler. So you can say it's some sort of collaborative project between information science and media informatics here in Regensburg. Co-authors are Elisabeth Salomon, David Elsweiler, and my supervisor, Christian Wolf. So without further ado, um, I will go into the introduction. Um, as early as 2014, um, false information and fake news on social media has been considered a hot topic. The World Economic Forum a forum called it um, one of the top 10 trends of 2014. As you can see, the rapid spread of misinformation online. And in my uh, personal um, impression, I would say with the recent American presidency, um, it became a dominant topic in media. And especially nowadays with the COVID pandemic, it's a even more dominant topic in everyday society. Just uh, some examples. These are just some articles I found recently in the New York Times talking about the problem of fake news in the context of older adults. Um, another example from a German outlet, Spiegel, talking about the problems of fake news in the context of the corona pandemic. So this is a big topic um, that is talked about in society and in general. And of course, as it is also a very important topic, um, it's also gathered attention from the scientific community. Um, you will find a lot of theoretical work um, trying to build taxonomies, and what are misinformations, what are disinformations and stuff like this. Um, in a famous science uh, publication, the researchers were looking at how rumors and false information are spread on social media. If you have visited any sort of um, text mining um, conference or NLP conference, you will always find some tracks nowadays um, dealing with uh, the automatic prediction or analysis of fake news in social media, um, workshops on fact extraction and verification, as you can find here. So this is a big topic. And of course, information science is also dealing with this topic. Um, specifically in the realm of information behavior, researchers look at how people interact and share false information, how they perceive false information and other factors. One particular research area that we are also situated in is the analysis of individual person related factors in the consumption and interaction with false information on social media. So are there some person related factors that change the way to interact with false information? This is, of course, interest, an interesting topic if you want to holistically really understand uh, um, false information behavior itself. As early as 2009, um, researchers were looking at, at factors like the user type, so how active someone is on a specific social media outlet, how intrinsic and extrinsic motivation influences the behavior, and other factors that are looked at, um, some classics in Individual, individual factors and in information behavior, gender, personality. And of course, we also talked at this conference a lot about information literacy. And as you can assume, this is also a factor that you might imagine has some influence on the way to interact with false information um, online. Most of the studies are, of course, either internationally or America focused. And um, we personally did conduct a study that is purely focused on Germany and the interaction with false information from German, uh, from Germans on social media. So if you want to conduct a study specifically for Germany to analyze some of these factors, um, you have to talk about Facebook as biggest social media outlet. It's still the most popular social media outlet in Germany. Um, Twitter has gained some popularity with the recent um, American presidency and uh, dominance in media, but it's still just a, a, a niche, so to speak, in the general public. So we focused our analysis on Facebook um, and on information behavior on Facebook. And to explore this topic in, in a first pilot study, we decided to perform a questionnaire study, a service study, 
um, who deemed this fitting to find first quantitative results that might lead us into novel directions to um, access this topic. What are the variables that we are interested in? Um, again, our focus actually lied on these um, person-related factors. So we were interested in gender in the biological sense, just because it's such a big topic and individual factors on information behavior, but also on this um, factor, Facebook usage and user type. So how actively are you using social media? Does this influence in any shape or form how you interact with false information? A more abstract factor that we also deemed interesting was trust in social media. It seems like an educated guess that uh, the more you trust social media, the more you might change your behavior towards interaction with false information. These are the three factors we focus for our analysis on. And what are we meaning when we talk about false information behavior? Um, I will outline the um, specific question we use to measure these variables later on, but on a more global level, we are interested how people handle false information. So how do they think to consume false information? How do they think to share false information and so on? From an information literacy perspective, how do they verify information if they deem it false? And how do they actively react to false information? So do they report false information? Do they like common false information and so on? Um, yes, we, I will talk about the variables in more detail in the upcoming slides. Again, it's a questionnaire based study. And um, the questionnaire is rather long and also a bit complex, I would say. Um, scales are switching every now and then. It consists of 42 items, and you can think about the questionnaire as some list of items that are clustered um, to summarize some of the variables aforementioned. So you have a um, list of items that deal to um, measure and operationalize uh, Facebook intensity usage um, and another cluster to, to measure verification of false information. And I will look at these um, items in specific in the upcoming slides. Since the test, uh, since the questionnaire was rather complex, we conducted various pre-tests with small sample sizes, which were quite important to um, guarantee the understanding of the questionnaire. And we acquired participants via um, general Facebook groups on Facebook. So participants had to be Facebook users in some sort. Um, they had to be, um, yeah, they had to be from Germany and we posted it in um, Facebook groups that were focused on the acquisition of quantitative data for questionnaires, which is to some extent also a small problems. Overall, we collected data from 119 persons. Um, but since these platforms or these groups are actually really focused on, on students trying to acquire participants for their studies, our sample is very focused on students on of the age group of 21 to 27. So um, instead of um, showing the questionnaire in detail, um, I tr will try to spare some time by just focusing on the results and um, and um, talking about the questionnaire build up uh, during the results, so to speak. I will not talk a lot about gender because we didn't find any interesting results in this context and no significant um, results. And overall, which is a bit, um, discouraging to some extent, but the overall headline of our paper is not so true. Um, we didn't find a lot of results showing some interactions between these variables, but I would argue that some of the descriptive results we find uh, are a bit interesting. So don't, don't, um, don't um, question too much that I will talk a lot about descriptive results now in the beginning. Um, we will later on talk a bit about interactions between these variables, but we just didn't find a lot of um, results. So I will talk with Facebook usage. Again, we try to find a variable to measure the intensity of active Facebook usage. Um, we didn't invent any parts of our questionnaires by ourselves. We actually took some more or less validated questionnaires from other research areas and adjusted it to our specific use case. For the Facebook usage, we used a questionnaire that is used in psychology to measure daily media usage, but also other addiction types and is every now and then adjusted to some extent. And we use it for Facebook and specifically. So we adjusted the questions. You have a scale that is not really metric or ordinal at all, but is uh, some sort of 
temporary scale um, to measure how often you use something. We identified certain Facebook um, activities that we wanted to um, include in this questionnaire. So something like updating status, general browsing, read, reading posts, some active and some passive activities. And we summarized all these results in an overall variable called Facebook intensity, which we will later on actually use to um, measure the Facebook usage in significant tests. Um, yeah, so I will go into the results of this part of our questionnaire right away. Don't be discouraged by this large table. I will focus on the important results. Um, it's a bit hard to interpret the results since the scale is a bit different, but overall um, we find some effect that is rather well known in social media research and in research of collaborative media overall, um, which is that Facebook is mostly used in a passive way. So people use Facebook to browse in a passive way, read posts and so on, and very ra rarely users use Facebook in some sort of active way by really updating something, commenting something, and so on. This is rather well known, but this is some sort of statistical problem for us if we want to find difference between these, um, you can call it post don't lurker groups um, overall. Overall, the Facebook usage is, so to speak, rather low or mediocre. You have a lot of people that use it very passively and few people that use it very actively. This is not something super novel for us. Um, the more abstract analysis concerning trust in social media is a bit more interesting. Again, we used the questionnaire from another field of research, uh, a scale to measure consumer skepticism toward advertising and um, transferred it simply to um, social media, or in this case, Facebook. You have certain questions that you um, give your affirmation to on a scale from one to five. So in this specific case, you get asked if you find social media informative, truthful, reliable, accurate, and essential. We sum this value up to get an overall measurement for trust in social media. Looking at these specific results in a descriptive way, um, we did find a, a low to mediocre um, overall trust in social media. Um, the lowest value is fine for the statement social media is reliable. The highest value for the statement social media is informative. Um, so overall, our specific sample seems to be a bit skeptical of social media and have a mediocre trust, a mediocre skepticism towards social media. Looking at the um, concrete topic of our paper, the interaction with false information. Um, again, it was the same questionnaire type as the Facebook intensity. We just adjusted the question to false information, but the measurement scale was the same, so the results are quite comparable. We looked at the question how many times people perceive to consume false information, share, comment, and like false information. Again, if we look at the um, statistics for this, um, we also find something that is also shown a bit in other research, but which we can indeed verify here for Germany as well. Um, people seem to, uh, people um, assume, or at least they say that they consume false information quite frequently. It's a bit hard to um, transfer these numbers, but the value four is something like multiple times a month. But when it comes to um, active interaction with false information, they think to not interact at all with false information. So they don't think they share false, false information. They don't think they comment or like or do anything with false information. Too much um, very low values for this um, topic. When we look at what um, people, what tactics people apply to verify information, um, we used a, a questionnaire part of Flanagan and Metzger. They designed a questionnaire in psychology to study the credibility of information. And uh, we could basically just take this questionnaire. We removed some questions that just didn't make any sense in the context of Facebook. But other than this, it's um, quite the same. Um, you can see uh, various types of um, ways to verify information, like checking the page itself, the credentials of the poster, using other information sources. Looking at this um, results in detail, um, we identified that the 
verification strategy, strategy seems to vary um, quite largely among the participants. So the most frequent verification strategies are indeed to use other information sources and to check the comments of a Facebook post. And in a, on a more abstract level, check if the information is an objective statement or an opinion, but the values are uh, on the distributions of selection of these items is, is quite similar. So every of these tactics is chosen among some participants, um, most frequently the use of other information sources. When we talk to the, about the reaction to false information, what we mean are the different possibilities that you can actively interact if you encounter false information on social media platform or Facebook specifically. Nowadays, you can um, report a um, contribution on Facebook directly to Facebook as false information. You can, of course, even more actively try to comment um, the post and, and say that this is false, false information, you can share it. Um, what we did, however, identify that these kind of active interactions with false uh, information are something people rarely to never do, or at least they report they never do it. The only thing they do is they unsubscribe the post uh, rather occasionally, occasionally on average. Um, this is, of course, kind of discouraging um, that they wouldn't um, interact with, with a function like reporting the post, which is rather easy on Facebook and also works uh, anonymously, um, but they tend to do just a rather passive activity to react to false information, which is, of course, a problem for the um, finding of false information on the side of Facebook. Now uh, to the real title of this um, paper itself, which was the interaction effects between um, the person related um, factors and uh, um, dependent variables. We performed several statistical tests for all the variables and the questionnaire items. Since we analyzed a lot of research questions, we had to perform a correction of the level of significance, which we did. So the p-values I will report um, shortly um, are corrected. And p-values, um, again, gender did not show any significant difference. And overall, we didn't find a lot of um, interaction and relationships. So overall, we did for our sample not find um, the person-related attributes are a, a important predictor of false information behavior measured by our instruments. The things we did find, um, I will report, nevertheless, some of them are trivial uh, and intuitive to some extent. For example, Facebook intensity. So uh, the more active you are on Facebook, the more you seem to trust Facebook and social media, which sounds intuitive. Um, the more active you are on social media, on Facebook specifically, the more you also think to actively engage with false information. So to share, comment and like false information on a moderate level, um, which also sounds rather trivial for us, but it's also interesting at the same time. Um, concerning trust in social media as a factor that might influence the way you interact with false information, we did not find a lot of significant results again. Um, one significant uh, correlation we did find with the, very, uh, with the verification of false information, the specific activity to check the comments of a post to identify if this post is false or true or contains false or true information. Um, and that also sounds a bit intuitive. If you trust social media more, you probably trust the participants of social media on, on a larger scale and therefore you, you trust comments more would be my explanation for this. So to summarize um, these results, um, again, we did not find a lot of what actually our goal was, person-related factors as an influencing factor for false information behavior. Nevertheless, you, we did find some interesting findings. Some of them were verified concerning re previous research. Pacific participants think to consume false information, but they don't think they interact in the distribution of false information in any way. The more active a user is, the more likely she or he interacts or reacts to false information. But a bit of a problem is that people, even if they encounter and identify something as false information, don't seem to um, want to report this uh, uh, this problem, they 
passively just unsubscribe the poster and um, that's the most frequent activity. This is also, of course, in line with the simple fact that most people use these platforms in a passive way. So um, the group that would report stuff like this is rather small, which is the active poster activity group on Facebook. Of course, this study has a lot of um, had a, has a lot of rather clear limitations and it's, it's a limited sample size. Again, we were only meant able to acquire a lot of students, which is a limitation, but on the other hand, um, this age group from 20 to 27 is also the largest group on Facebook. So um, you can work to some extent with this data. And um, what I really, really want to point out is the subjectivity, um, which is inherent in a questionnaire study. We did not, um, measure that people really encounter false information in less than a month. We only measured what they perceive to encounter. We have, again, the overrepresentation of students and um, the pro problem, which was also a statistical problem that the majority of Facebook users is rather passive. We had some open-ended questions to gather some qualitative feedback, for example, some questions, what other verification strategies people use. Um, but this um, open-ended questions were barely used because the questionnaire was large enough as it was. And I think that people were a bit exhausted, too exhausted to also answer qualitative care questions. So there was no point in using them. Um, so although some limitations, um, I think there's a lot of future work you can build upon these limitations. I would thank you for your attention. And I think I was okay in the time frame. <laughs> And thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your question.